my friends, we're going to evaluate the integral of e to the negative x squared from zero to infinity, and it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be really short. If you wanna see a longer version of this, you can check it out every single step, uh, but this is a really quick one using polar coordinates. And we're gonna set this integral equal to i, and then we're going to rewrite it using y instead of x. That doesn't change anything. And we're going to multiply these two equations together. So the left-hand side becomes i squared. And this is the right-hand side. It's just these two multiplied together with a little bit of rearrangement. Now we're going to evoke an exponent law where we can add the exponents because we're multiplying the bases together. So that's what we're doing. And at this point, you know, we're going to convert into polar coordinates. Now, I'm not going to go into detail on how to do that. You can check that out in the longer video. But this is a kind of a quick way of going into polar coordinates. So we know that x and y go from 0 to infinity. So we're bound to quadrant 1 right here. So in terms of polar coordinates, r will go from 0 to infinity and theta is within this quadrant one, so zero to pi over two, which is 90 degrees. So r squared in terms of x squared and y squared using the Pythagorean theorem is just this right here, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. And the dx dy for polar coordinates is r dr d theta, and r will go from zero to infinity, and theta will go from zero to pi over two. So if we substitute this in and convert to polar coordinates, this is what we've got right here. So instead of a double integral with x and y, we have a double integral with theta. Theta can separate from the r and, and r. And theta is going from 0 to pi over 2. r is going from 0 to pi. And to evaluate these two integrals, we'll do the right one first. We'll do a u substitution, set u equal to r squared. Uh, take the derivative to get du dr equals 2r. And we'll substitute that in to give us this part right here. So this, this left integral we haven't touched yet. And this right integral, we're integrating e to the negative u because u is r squared. And this r dr, if we rearrange this and solve for r dr, multiply both sides by dr, divide by 2, we get r dr equals du over 2, which is what we got here. And at this point, oh, we can just integrate this. This is no problem at this point. Integral of d theta is theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. The integral of e to the negative u is literally e to the negative u with a negative sign. Uh, so we got this 1 half got yanked out. Here's the negative sign that came out and we're evaluating it from the limits as u goes to infinity and, and 0. So we'll just plug in using these, these limits right here because we can't, well we can't plug in infinity so we have to write it as a limit. This limit term becomes zero as a goes to infinity, and this right term becomes one. So this whole thing simplifies like totally down. These two become four. This pi here becomes pi, and then the negative cancels out with this negative. So our i squared is now pi over four. And we want i because that's what we're trying to evaluate. So we take the square root plus or minus the square root of pi over two. Uh, but we can readily reject the negative sign. We could use the squeeze theorem, but this function, you know, like e to the negative x squared, it's always above the horizontal axis. So the integral is always going to be positive for here. So we'll take the positive one, reject the negative, and we've got the integral and we're done.